Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Dennis. I'm from the University of Bern. I'm a subject librarian there. And um, I'm currently in the process of setting up a new journal where we use context for typesetting XML. And I will just give you a brief overview of um, how this works. Um, just to let you know, I have a couple of code examples. And I'm not sure if you can read them in the back. So feel free to come closer if, if there's need. OK, uh, the context is this. We use a print journal, Udaica, that we've had before. And we convert it to an e-only open access journal that we host on our Bern University Publishing OGS platform. I've talked about it yesterday in the lightning talk briefly. And the task is we want a single source workflow. We want different output formats, PDF, XML, HTML, chats as our production format. So we need chats to go to all these different output formats. We want a high quality typeset PDF, but no manual typesetting. Um, the requirement is also to have PDFA and no costly software, which is it's supposed to be free, as in beer and in speech. So it must be open source and reusable, so to say. So for the HTML and XML, we have LensViewer, XLT software. But the big question was, how do we do with the PDF? How do we get from XML to PDF, meeting all these requirements? So that's the workflow I showed it yesterday. And now we're concentrating on this last step here, going from the JATS to PDF. So let's meet context. Context is a macro package based on tag. Um, some of you might know it. Tag is a market-based plain text typesetting system um, initially developed by Donald Knut in the late 70s, 80s. So it's kind of a dinosaur. Um, early on, some people decided that this package is not really usable by users or it's really complicated. So they started developing macro packages to make life easier for authors. First of this is LaTeX, man, much used today. You will probably he have heard of it or know it or have used it by Leslie Lampert initially from the 80s till today. And then there's another macro package. Um, they started developing it in the 90s and it's still developed today by a Dutch company <coughs> called Brachma Advanced Document Engineering. Um, has a slightly different approach than LaTeX. Um, yeah, that's just to introduce it. So why do we use a tag-based solution? First of all, let's start from down there. It's open source. It's multi-platform. It works on like everything from a Windows PC to a toaster. Um, it's customizable. If you know how to program the system, you can do really a lot of things with it. And last but not least, it gives us high quality typesetting. That means we have micro typographic extensions, merging extension, kerning, tracking, all those typographic stuff um, that programmers usually don't care about, but readers do. Um, and it has the Knut Plus line breaking as, uh, algorithm to distribute the white space um, in an optical way among paragraphs. Forget about these things. You will see it in the output, or if you don't see it, it's actually a good thing. Um, so context is on top of that. I said it. Um, the good thing here is I, it's always a bit like a comparison to LaTeX, because most people ask me, why don't you just use LaTeX for it? Well, that's why. Context is a, gives us a consistent interface. It's not like you use packages in LaTeX for all the tasks. If you Google um, for LaTeX-based solutions, it's always use this package, and then you have these commands. And it's, the commands always differ between packages. It's not really consistent. Context is developed by one company. So it's more monolithic. It's one interface. And you have commands that are actually predictable. If you know how to style one element, you will probably also know how to style another. Then PDFA is possible which is a big selling point. 
and we can process XML just out of the box. Um, no XSLT required, no additional software. You just write your style sheets in the context language and then you go straight through. So that's how it looks like. It's a sample context document. Those of you who know LaTeX will certainly recognize it. We have backslash all over the place, braces, brackets. So it's more or less more of the same. The differences are subtle. For example, you have a start text command down there, line 17 and line 29 stop text instead of begin document and document. Like small differences, syntax is slightly different. But the other thing is if you look at the, like the preamble over here, you do everything with these setup commands and they work more or less the same for each element. This is very nice. As I've said before, you don't load packages. You don't have to just um, adjust the output using rather strange, no, no, that's not, not strange, strange is too, too strong, but two commands that are used only in the context of, a, of one particular package. It's, you can all, uh, do everything with the same commands. That was, is what I want to say. So what do I need now? First, we need an XML input file, obviously. The second is we need context style setups, like those things up here, much more of them. And then we need the mapping to map XML elements to context. And this is actually quite similar to what you would do with an XLT template, just to do it in, the, in one tool. <coughs> so we have here a sample minimal JATS XML article. We have the front matter over here, which is collapsed. Those of you in the front can actually see it. Then we have a section element, paragraphs with italics, list elements, bulleted list, uh, a display quote down here, um, another section heading, footnotes as well. So what do we do now? In our setup file, we have like, like a minimal setup like this. It's just an excerpt. It's not everything. But what we do is we start a new setup that I call XML chats setups, where I just say, okay, which elements do I want? Nothing, so that nothing comes in that I don't want. And then I select all those elements that I really, really need. So I start with article, front, body, back, and I assign those to corresponding additional macros or setups that have the prefix XML colon and then for example, XML column body will render the body. The same with bold and italics down there. The the, um, at, the, at the end, I have to re register this setup and then we can go on. So let's start with the body element. We have again a setup, XML body, and the main thing is here, we just flush it through. There's this whole element and we just pass it through to context to handle it. But before that, we have an additional macro to handle the front matter. Title, author, title page, ISSN number, whatever you want, you can just pass it through here. Next thing is it's a paragraph. Again, pretty simple, XMLP, um, flush it through, quite simple. But the interesting thing is here, we can use a, a filter, for example, to check if there is a language attribute. If we need to change hyphenation patterns, for example, so we, we check that, and if they are there, we use another command to pipe them in somehow. I will, won't show it in detail, but it's just I use another command to check what is there to map it into an like into context syntax. So we go on. Um, at the end, we add manually a paragraph break to start the next paragraph afterwards. We do the same thing with italics and bold. Just take the element, flush it through, wrap it in a group, like with the braces, add the necessary um, commands, emphasis, bold, and you're actually done. You do this with every element you have in a usual JATS file, and you end up with this. 
you de define, like in one file, you will define uh, the article layout. This is up here, the front matter I've been talking about. And then we style the other elements, we take them over. And it's actually a rather painless workflow once it's set up. Um, so, your questions. Should I use this? Why should I use this? Um, the answer is obviously, well, maybe. Um, it works, so that's a yes. It meets our requirements. So if your requirements are similar, if you want PDF A, no additional tools, nothing to pay for like Antenna House or like these rather cost intensive solutions, that's fine. But of course, it's another tool in the tool chain. Someone needs to master it. You need to have someone who is familiar with these kind of things. I have written my PhD thesis in LaTeX, so I'm actually coming from that world. Um, so I had to, to actually to adapt to the XML and to get that over. But if you have someone who is used to process XML files, maybe a different story. Um, yeah, these are the two drawbacks, I think. You need to have someone who really, really, really <coughs> knows these kind of things, who's familiar with it. And you have another tool which might break. I'm not saying it will break, but it's another, yeah, another dependency, so to say. Yeah, that's it for mine.